Welcome back. Security at health facilities has come into sharp focus after a deadly shooting at New Somerset Hospital in Cape Town. A patient who was ready for discharge disarmed a police officer over the weekend before opening fire. Two other patients were killed at the scene while the officer later succumbed to his injuries. So we're asking again what measures can be put in place to prevent a repeat of this kind of tragedy. We're joined now by the Western Cape's Health MEC, Dr. Noma French Mbombo. Uh, Dr. Mbombo, it's great to have you with us on the program. Uh, incredibly shocking story. I, I want to begin our interview, if I may, by asking you whether the death toll from that shooting is three. And, and, that's, uh, and that's where it ended. It didn't escalate from there. No, it's all three. Um, the two are the ones who were dead on the scene, and the other one is a police uh, who died um, after being to, uh, went to ICU. Dr. Mbombo, it, it, it's your worst nightmare, isn't it? Going into a hospital for a routine procedure, whatever the, the, the procedure might be, but you feel safe or you should be feeling safe when you're in hospital, and more than that, you feel vulnerable in hospital, don't you? Of course, of course, because it's supposed to be a place for healing. Mm. It's supposed to be a place where you feel indeed safe. And also because, as we always say, that we shouldn't be militarizing or securitizing, securitizing the, um, the, the, the health space. But unfortunately, it's a, this kind of an unfortunate incident, a once off where, because remember, the police was not a patient. Uh, at the time that um, his gun was taken away from him mm. uh, through the scaffold by the patient. So indeed it is unfortunate and the staff are still traumatized in as much as that they're undergoing counseling. But with a post-traumatic distress, we know that it will keep on coming in and go and also it might linger for a long time. And also for those patients uh, who are in that cubicle, because it's a six bedded cubicle, uh, the two ones who ended up not being shot. Just to think that um, there were still three bullets sure. uh, was in that. It, means, it meant that if they would have probably um, not only run away, actually they would have been shot, but I think um, one of them was saved by when the, um, the gunman asked for the cell phone uh, to call whoever. Uh, and then he handed over the cell phone mm. and got the packet of chips. I think he was saved uh, by that. You talk about the gunman, uh, Dr. Mbombo, any clarity, I know this is not an issue that is with the police because he's in police custody, but is there any mm -hmm. clarity as to the motive for what happened over the weekend? Um, yes, the police are still investigating. Um, however, what came up, uh, which is through the media, and actually the police commissioner did indicate, will send us in the report, uh, that the, uh, the gunman was an ex-cop and he has been actually uh, quite um, in trouble uh, when he ended up being expelled. So I, I'm speculating that mm. probably uh, when maybe he saw a policeman, uh, probably maybe that uh, kind of um, experience, maybe it came across noting. Uh, he wasn't admitted as a mental health patient. There was no mental illness. Um, when he arrived, because he came with, a, um, with some wounds that were uh, taken care of, and he was ready to be discharged. Actually, he was already discharged around about 10 o'clock, but because we have to wait for um, a transport, because he wasn't, he's not staying in the metro. Mm. So that's why it took longer. Dr. Mbombo, given everything that you've just said, we've spoken to Denosa as well. They've talked about how they foresee improvements insofar as security for staff and patients is concerned. Are there any steps that will be taken in the short term, uh, the medium term? An incident, it's about how do we learn a lesson from that. But taking note of this didn't happen in the passage because the, the, the ward is, is a long passage ward with cubicles. So it happened inside a cubicle. You cannot put cameras in that private space. Uh, because the cameras can only go as far as in the passage. But because you have to, uh, again, address the issue of the privacy and the, also the confidentiality. And also there is, uh, there was uh, a security there by the door, as is always the case with the wards. And also the security doesn't only stay there at the entrance, but also to move around about. Noting them, that everyone was inside. So I'm talking about the patients already inside, where you thought that, okay, the security is there to prevent for those who come from outside to come inside 
uh, who might threaten the safety. They're already inside, so you may assume that it was safe. Mm -hmm. um, yes, indeed, the issue of the security, we have to look, re look at it because we are not dealing, um, we are dealing now with the patients who are also potentially the criminals. It's a manifestation of what is happening out there outside. Uh, unfortunately, have absorbed all of the social is and becomes a microcosm for the whole of the society. Um, indeed, uh, I'm very worried about the staff, especially the, the matron uh, who managed to apprehend and talk to the gunman that he, he ended up even giving um, away that weapon. Because at the time that the nurse was in that cubicle, it was only um, herself and the gunman mm. with the gun still in, on hand. Uh, with uh, now what's here that there is still three bullets. Uh, he, should, he would have killed um, her or would have killed even all other patients that were there. Yeah, certainly very worrying indeed. And as you say, the actions of that matron who was on duty likely saving mm. many, many more lives. Dr. Norma French and Bombo, let me thank you for your time this morning. Western Cape Health MEC speaking to us there in the wake of what unfolded at the New Somerset Hospital in Greenpoint with three people having been killed in that shooting.